today we're going to be looking at a follow-up from two previous videos I did about trying to read in large files into memory in C Sharp. So when I say large files, in particular I'm talking about files that aren't going to fit into memory even if we wanted to, so um, you know things that might be terabytes in size, and how we can stream through those effectively, offer the ability to seek around effectively as well, and have multiple sort of readers across that stream. So if you haven't seen the two previous videos, I'll be linking them up here so that you can go back and watch them. Please go check those out first. Come right back here and continue along so you can get the full context. And then I had mentioned that I found a, an even better approach and it all came back to streams and my opinion on avoiding streams. So in this video, we're gonna look at some of the code for that. I'll show you some benchmarks and let's just jump over to Visual Studio. All right, so on my screen we have Visual Studio, and this is actually my segmented stream. We're looking at the read method. And what I was mentioning in the previous video was that my optimization had worked successfully, but the concept of using streams in particular is kind of crappy for what I'm trying to do. And why is it crappy? Well, if I scroll up to the, the actual signature here for the read method, which is on the stream, we actually have to provide a byte array buffer that we're going to copy data into. And the key word here for what I don't like is that we have to copy data into it. So yes, we can seek across a stream and jump to any point we want, but if we wanna actually examine what we have in the stream, we have to copy bytes. In my particular implementation of my segment map, that backs my segmented stream, I actually have this stuff already pulled into memory. So why do I need to go ahead and copy that memory around just to be able to read it? I figured there has to be a better way and a more efficient way. What I came up with is actually something that I think is in the spirit of being able to use things like spans and read-only sequences. So I actually was able to add an extension method to my segment map, and this actually lets me use my segment map as if I had spans over that segmented data. Awesome, so here's my API for my extension method, and what I have is an I enumerable of read-only sequences of bytes, and I just called that part slice, and then I added in another Boolean, so this is a, a tuple, or if you pronounce it tuple, then it's <laughs> it's one of those. So you have a basically a, a double parameter that comes back um, as part of this I enumerable. And because it's an extension method, we have this syntax here where we have this that precedes the I segment map, and it's on this static class and the static method. So if you're not familiar with extension methods, it just allows you to, instead of passing in a segment map, it looks like you're saying segment map dot iterate slices. So kind of this nice syntactic sugar that makes it look kind of cool. And then really the only other parameters that we have are offset and length. And these parameters, if you think about a segment map being something that actually resembles the entire disk in this case, or a large file, what we're able to do is think about any offset within that and any length within those bounds. So in theory, if you wanted to start at zero and read all, you know, two terabytes of some image, then you're able to do that just by providing zero when the equivalent value for two terabytes is the length. So of course we can't pull a whole two terabytes into RAM. Um, so that's what the segment map is supposed to help us with. But what this API should let us do is actually read without doing all of the additional copies. So I still have a fix me in because I'd like to clean this up and maybe check some um, validation for some of these inputs, but that's to follow. And then the rest of this code is actually oddly similar to my segmented stream read method. In fact, I just copied and pasted over a lot of it and then changed the part that has to do the actual array copying. So in particular, I might be able to get away with removing some of these variables. I just have these left over because I, like I said, I copied and pasted it and didn't want to break too much. But let's scroll down a little bit lower and see what's going on. So same logic that I had in the other place for actually being able to get segments pulled out. In fact, I changed the other one already to have debug asserts. I'll probably do the same on some of these. This was just for sanity checking as I was testing it out. So we pull in the right segment for what we're trying to load. So for example, if we're at a particular offset, then these two methods together allow us to get the right segment for that offset. And then within that segment, we actually know which offset we want to be at. The part after that 
is supposed to help us get the slice out of that segment, and we have that as a subsequence. Beyond that, it's just moving all those other counters and stuff along, so like I said, we might not actually need a bunch of these, but I just had these copied over because it was working before in my stream. The last little part that's different here is really just that I yield return this subsequence, and then I have this other piece right here, which is just whether or not there's more data. From my perspective, I don't actually really need this second piece. I just figured it might be nice if you're inside of a for loop and want to know if there's more data still coming. So this method is really simple and really similar to the stream implementation that I had. And the nice thing about that is that it was already working for the stream, so I don't have to try too much just to prove that this one works, but I am going to follow up with writing some tests. Okay, now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and look at some of the benchmarks that I have for this. To briefly explain my benchmarks, I'm using benchmark.net and I'm pointing at an image of a hard drive that I have on my desktop. This file here, ImageDD, is just a 40 gig hard drive. I don't have any setup or cleanup. I've actually just left these. I can remove them. I don't really need them right now. And then let's go look at the two methods that we're using for benchmarking. The first is going to be using the segment stream. And what I do in this benchmark is I make a new segment map. I'm trying it out with a four meg segment and then being able to hold up to 50 of those segments in memory. So that would be 50 times four megs or 200 megabytes of RAM in total for this stream. Now, something that's interesting about these particular benchmarks is because I'm not doing anything to seek back and forth on them, the actual value of having more and more segments here isn't actually really noticed because I'm only going to be reading forward. In fact, holding a cache of segments that we're not going to be looking at again is kind of just a waste of RAM, but it's going to be the same across both of our benchmarks, so I'm not actually too worried about that messing anything up right now. The next part is that we just have to wrap our segment map in a stream, which is the segment stream that I showed at the beginning of this video, and what the two previous videos focus on looking at. And finally, I just have a 4K buffer that I'm going to be reading into, and we read from the start to the end. And like I said, it's going to be a 40 gig image, so we're just basically doing 4K copies of the data in that image, buffer by buffer. Pretty simple, and this runs, no issues, and I'll show you the output after. But let's go ahead and look at the other benchmark, which is using my slice iterator extension method. So again, we go make a segment map. I could refactor this and just actually have it pulled into one spot so that when I make a new segment map, it has all the same parameters. I haven't done that yet, but one thing I want to point out is that I cannot use the same instance of a segment map between these two benchmarks, and I can't use the same one across runs of this benchmark. The reason why is because this segment map caches that data, it will in fact be able to go pull all of that stuff from memory the second time it's used, or at least as much of it fit into memory. So initially when I was working on this and it was only over a one gigabyte file, I might have been able to accidentally allocate a full buffer of memory or full number of segments to cache that would hold literally the entire file in memory. Now the subsequent benchmarks would be skewed because they would show that it's doing something different. It's not reading from disk, it's actually pulling from memory again. And of course, people that are keen and watching this going, well, it's not really fair to benchmark this stuff when it's reading from your disk. There could be other things going on in your computer at that time. Yep, I totally get it. I'm just trying to prove what will actually happen in real world scenarios. And of course, if I wanna have better benchmarks and just prove some of the nitty gritty stuff more accurately, I can of course go make some other more contrived data sets and then not have them load from disk. But what I'm trying to do is show my different pieces working together and I just wanted to see if across some several runs that I'd be able to notice a difference. So the final part of this benchmark is really just this for each loop and like we can see I'm just calling the segment map iterate slices and recall that I said it's an extension method right so that's why I can have this nice syntax here. I'm starting at the zero offset and then just going to long max value. And the nice thing is that this is gonna trim at the actual length of my segment map. So my segment map is not the length of long max value, but this is just a safe way to get to the end. And now that I'm reading this and kind of talking about it in the video, I could actually have different overrides for this. Maybe it would be something like 
you know, no parameters is just going to do the whole thing, or you could have a an offset only, or you could have a length only, that kind of thing. Maybe the length only scenario doesn't really make sense. So I'm going to play around with the different APIs for this after, but I just wanted to prove it first. All right, so that's probably enough of me blabbing about code. I know you're probably interested in the benchmarks, so get that drum roll going and let's go see what the output is. All right, so the first row that we have here is for segment stream. Please recall that this is for reading in a 40 gig file and streaming across it. And you'll notice that the mean is about 24 and a half seconds. So that's not too bad. Um, I'm not really concerned about that amount of time. I just want to be able to compare the two. When we look at the memory allocated though, there is a ton of memory allocated because we're doing 4K sections at a time. So the total amount that we ended up having to allocate here is actually almost three gigs of small allocations that we had to do. If we jump down to the slice iterator, it's at 21 seconds, so it's faster, which is nice. It's not like it was half the speed or something ludicrous, but a little bit faster, I'll take it. I'll take all the performance I can out of it. If we go look at the memory allocated though, boom, boom, boom. We have multiple orders of magnitude less memory allocated. This is actually mind boggling to me. Um, <laughs> I think I probably could have assumed it would have been a lot less like it is. Um, but I mean, just seeing the result is like kind of kind of wild to me. So the actual API itself gives me the same benefit where I'm able to start scanning across the different parts of that file. And I've already got pieces of it pulled into memory. But without having to do all those little allocations, this amount of memory that it's ending up using is so much better that I'm just stunned. All right, so those are pretty awesome benchmark results, but I still have my work cut out for me. Everything that I've written so far that's actually using this segment map uses the stream approach, and that means that everything I've coded so far is used to this stream API, and now I have to go change everything to have this for each iterator approach, so I'm going to have to go revamp a lot of code. Now, I still haven't actually gone through and run this through a profiler to see if there's any other performance I can squeeze out of this. That's still to follow, and I'm still excited to follow up with more optimizations for this. But personally, I'm really happy with the progress so far, moving away from the stream API and being able to use something like read-only sequences and spans a little bit more effectively. So thanks for following along with these videos. I'm still hoping to find some other optimizations that I can make some follow-up videos on. And if I get things working the way I expect and the way that I hope, I might actually follow up with some of my use cases for trying to consume some of this so that I can show you why I'm trying to actually scan across large sets of data. Again, thanks for all your support and you might want to watch these videos over here.